Anne, it's me. I'm calling from Vienna. No? Sorry. I'm calling from Prague. You think I'm crazy, but let's just accept for a moment, shall we, that the trees have names. You know who this is. You leave the device in the truck at the back of the building. Barry will contact you with more instructions. Oh. Hello, it's Mom. postcard. Looks nice. And the photo. Glad you're making friends and so on. The thing is Anne, there just isn't enough money to send to you. I've spoken to your dad and he says no. She doesn't seem to care. She has no conscience. She expresses no remorse. She says, I do not recognise your authority. Just what does she mean by that? Who does she think she is? Does she really imagine she won't have to account for the life she's destroyed? Nothing in her eyes reveals one spark of human feeling. Is this the same little Anne who put all the tiny, tiny shoes in rows? And all the tiny, tiny dolls in rows? And all the tiny, tiny beads in rows? And what's more, pray to God each night. God bless Mummy. God bless Daddy. God bless Wiggy the Cat. God bless everyone. She set about her work, they say, with all the terrible detachment of an artist. Witnesses break down in tears. Videotapes from banks and shopping malls show Anne as just one more person going about their business under constant surveillance. The plate glass blows out of a shoe shop window in absolute silence and the little grey figures breaking apart and flying through the air in absolute silence with the tiny tiny flying shoes are real human beings mixed with the glass. No one can find as motive. The same Anne who summed up the mood of a generation, who appeared twice on the cover of Vogue magazine, who sold the film rights for two and a half million US dollars who studied in depth the baggage handling procedures and memorised the timetables of principal international airlines, who is, quote, a loner, unquote, who listens, quote, expressionlessly, end quote, to the description of, quote, outrage, unquote, after, quote, outrage, unquote, after, quote, outrage, unquote, she has perpetuated. And... Pick up the phone. I know you're there. It's no use hiding. Hiding from the world, Anne. Come on, grow up. And pick up the phone. Yeah. 
So what is this then? A cry for help? Because what am I supposed to do exactly about your cry for help? Hmm? And what if you're lying there, Anne? Already dead? Make me smile the way you used to, Anne. I know you're there. What we see here are various objects associated with the artist's attempts to kill herself over the past few months. For example, medicine bottles, records of hospital admissions, Polaroids of several HIV positive men with whom she has had intentionally unprotected intercourse, pieces of broken glass, and the walls of the gallery have been lined with her many suicide notes. In addition to these Polaroids, there are rather unpleasant, I have to say, video recordings of the attempts themselves. Well, I don't know about other people, but after the first time of this, I'd rather begin to wish she succeeded first time around. Head, green, water, to sink, death, long, ship, to pay, window, friendly, table, to ask, cold, stem, to dance, village, lake, sick, pride, to cook. I think that's a ridiculous comment about something that's clearly landmark work. It's moving, it's timely, it's sick, it's distressing, it's entertaining, it's sexy, it's highly personal and it's deeply serious and it raises vital questions about the world that we're living in. What fascinates me is her use of textures. There's a great sensitivity in the juxtaposition of materials used, for example, leather and glass, blood and paper, Vaseline and steel. It evokes the viewer in an almost visceral reaction. I'm afraid what we're seeing here is pure narcissism. And I have, think we have to ask ourselves a question. Who would possibly come and see this undigested exhibition as a work of art? Yes, but isn't that the exact point she's trying to make? Where are the boundaries? What is acceptable? Because it's pure self-indulgence. Literally, in this case, end. And the work begins. With respect to you, I think she'd find the whole point of making a point ludicrously outmoded. I mean, surely the point that the point that's being made is pointless, and then the whole point of this exercise, i.e. these attempts on her own life, point to that. It makes me think of the Chinese proverb, the darkest place is always under the lamp. The what? The darkest place. It's Chinese. Why can't people learn to draw? Why can't people learn to paint? Students should be taught skills, not ideas. Because what we see here is clearly the work of a girl who not should have been admitted to an art school, but to a psychiatric unit. A what? A mental hospital. So why why she could receive treatment? Well, I have to say, that's an extraordinary remark. And something I don't expect to hear outside of a police state. And which, no, I'm sorry, but this has to be said. Which I feel is a reinstatement of the notion of intarta kunst. The so-called degenerate well, art prohibited. Rubbish. rubbish? I don't think so. Prohibited by the Nazis? I mean, listen to yourself. Are you saying that this girl should not be able to produce work, but instead be compelled to undergo psychiatric treatment? Well, I think that whatever very personal agendas we bring to this, we're all agreed. It's moving, it's timely, it's sick, it's distressing, it's deeply it's really serious, flabby it's reason. sexy, it's Her entertaining, it's illuminating, she is, it's she's highly personal and it raises herself. vital questions and about the world that we're living in. Years in Bedlam. If, on the other hand, she's only play acting, then the whole performance becomes more cynical and is doubly disgusting. Why not? Why shouldn't it be a performance? Exactly, because it comes a kind of theatre. It's, it's theatre, that's right. For a world in which theatre itself has died. Instead of the outmoded conventions of dialogue and so-called characters lumbering towards the embarrassing denominators of the theatre, Anne is offering us a pure dialogue of objects, of leather and glass, of Vaseline and steel, of blood, saliva and chocolate. She's offering us no less than the spectacle of her own existence. The radical pornography, if I may use that overused word, of her own broken and abused, almost 
Christ-like body. An object, in other words. A religious object. object. Yeah. But not the object of others. The object of herself. That's the scenario she offers. But surely we've seen all that. Haven't we seen all that in the so-called radicalism of the 60s stroke 70s? Deportment, narrow, brother to fear, stalk, false, anxiety to kiss, bride, pure, door to choose, hay, contented, ridicule to sleep, month, nice, woman to abuse. Seen it perhaps, but not seen it afresh. Not seen it now. Not seen it in the post-radical, post-human world where the gestures of radicalism simply offer us a whole new meaning in a society where the radical gesture is just one more form of entertainment, i.e. a product, in this case, artwork, to be consumed. Theatre has nothing to do with it, and I bitterly resent the implication that I'm some sort of Nazi. That was your last message. All messages have been deleted.